So today we're really excited because we're talking to CZK Quinn, who is a British fiction author and writes three different genres, psychological thriller, comedy and romance. She was first published by Hachette in 2010 with her debut novel, Glass Geishas. Geishas? Geishas. <laughs> You're good. You're good. <laughs> now, now Night Girls then self-published a romance series, The Ivy Lessons, which became an international bestseller and number one Kindle romance bestseller in the US and the UK. After her second daughter was born in 2013, she self-published the ba Bad Mother's Diary series, which also went on to become a number one Kindle romantic comedy bestseller. Susie K. Quinn's novels have been translated into seven languages and her books have sold over three quarters of a million copies worldwide. Wow. That is, is incredible. And I mean, we have to start by asking, when did you get into writing and what inspired you to do it and to sort of choose the first genre that you wrote? What was that journey? Um, so when did I first start writing? So you've just interviewed my twin sister, which is interesting because my first memory of writing was we were both eight years old and we both entered a writing competition and we both won the competition. Um, it's for our local bookshop. So that was the first time I remember, but we both used to write stories on um, like my parents' computer at the time. Um, and just she, oh, her stories, I always thought her stories were better than mine, but my, mine were always about stuff that had happened at school, you know. Um, and I remember one time my dad found them and he thought like, wow, you've written some stories. That's so great. And I was just absolutely mortified that he'd read them, you know, because um, I wasn't expecting anyone to read them. And I, th there was a boy I didn't like at school and I just reversed his surname and like made him the bad guy in the story. And my dad was like, oh, I wonder who this is. And I was like, no, oh, that's so embarrassing. Um, so I was pretty young, but when I first um, sort of started writing novels, I think I was about 21, something like that, when I actually first sort of seriously sat down and thought, oh yeah, I really want to try and write novels. And with a real sense of, oh no, why did I have to, why did I have to want to do this job? This is, you know, it's so competitive, you know, it's really a hard one. But um, yeah, so I was traveling at the time and I wrote, that's when I wrote Glass Gages and I wrote it probably many times and rewrote it many times. Um, and eventually um, it, it, an agent picked it up and then it was published. Um, so, so yeah, that's what happened there. <laughs> wow. And how, how did you transition from a psychological thriller into comedy and romance? Like, what, what was that journey like? A good question, good question. <laughs> so I think, so my first book was kind of, a, it didn't really know what it was, honestly. To, looking back now, I look at it and say like, oh, I really did not, you know, package that very well at all so my first book it was sort of women's fiction it had a bit of romance in it had some psychological thriller so it's kind of a bit of a mixture of all of that so I had sort of done that a bit um, and then basically I just I just had this great idea for a teacher student romance and I just wrote it it was just as simple as that really and I just thought oh, I really kind of like this idea so so I wrote it and it just it just sort of exploded that one so that was good and then um, the bad mother's diary again I just I was, you know I just had kids so I'm very unoriginal really um I just sort of started I have other all these funny stories and I just started writing you know this character um and yeah so so sorry it's not as pretty well not the most interesting answer but it was just yeah, based yeah. on oh I just had an idea for this and I wrote it and so and actually that was it so you started writing you know when you had you said you had children you started writing that genre did you mm -hmm. ever write a blog or anything like that or did you just go straight into sort of writing because you'd already previously written a book um, I was at the time I didn't write a blog but I did um, freelance journalism mm. and freelance ghostwriting and the, how I got into that was I literally just put up a website and and I hadn't done ghostwriting before when I did it so I charged like really low fees you know um, and it was, it was fine it was okay it was really good and the, the clients liked it and it was it was it's surprisingly kind of um, what's the word um, a lot of people want books written and there aren't a lot of people who write whole books you know um, so yeah, I hope that answers that question. That's yeah. fascinating. I actually love to know more about that ghostwriting process and how mm -hmm. it feels to to write something that you're not putting your name to. Like, do you enjoy the process of writing so much that that was okay? Yeah, or pretty much. Yeah, it's fine. It's fine. I'm I was just happy writing. I still would be. I'd still be happy. I, I don't mind if my name's on there or not. As long as I can kind of write and make a living from it, it's um, it's it's all fine. You know. Um, yeah, so it felt okay to me. I, I know some people would sort of feel like, oh, you know, I'd really want, I'd want to be recognised, but I'm, I'm honest, I don't think I'm fussed. Maybe I would be, I don't know, maybe if something really exploded and it was a brand name and I knew I was behind it and people were talking about like, oh, hey, there's this new author, you know, K.S., you know, Quinn, and I'm like, that's me, that's me, I don't know. But it, yeah, it, it didn't bother me not having my name or something. 
That's amazing. And in terms of your publishing journey, so you started with a publisher and then you went to self-publishing. Um, yeah. What was that yeah. journey like? What was it like, first of all, working with a publisher? And then why did you decide to go self-published? Uh, I, I like this story. So so basically, so I got, I got published when I was 30 and it was really exciting and I got a big advance and I really felt at that time like, oh, you know, I've made it. This is it now. This is why I know I've got a career as a writer. And my first book didn't do that well, it really didn't. And it didn't earn out as advance. And looking back now, I can see why it didn't. You know, like the main character wasn't very likable. I hadn't really got it in a particular genre. People didn't really know what it was, you know. Um, but anyway, uh, so so after that, um, I wrote um, The Ivy Lessons, which is the teacher-student book. Mm. And I, um, I did offer it to my publisher. And then they were going to take it, and then they weren't going to take it. And then they were, and I was so sort of indignant about it that I just put it up for self-publishing, really not expecting anything to happen, to be honest. I just felt so despondent and so like, oh, you know, are they, I don't think they're going to take it now. And, you know, um, and I really thought, oh, you know, at one point I'll look at that and I'll have to do some marketing or something or do something. And then I, after about, I think it's a week, I looked and there were two five-star reviews and I was like, oh my God, like people are reading it. This is, I didn't do anything at all, nothing. Um, we just put it on sale. Um, and, and I felt really great. And then the next week there were two one star reviews <laughs> and, um, oh, and I, nearly, I nearly took it down because I was so embarrassed and I so felt like, oh, this hasn't been validated by the industry, you know, this is just me being an idiot. And I really, really honestly nearly took it down. Um, and then, but I didn't. And then, and it had probably sold about 200, 300 copies by then. And then it, within the next week or two, it was selling like, you know, ten thousand a week, something like that, and 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 it was it was just amazing, and 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 I always try and remember that, like just at the point where I just felt so humiliated that I was going to give up. If I'd have stopped then, if I'd have given up and and not carried on with it, it wouldn't have happened, you know. So after I'd seen that could happen, I was like, wow, this is you know, this is wonderful, and and self publishing is really really mega profitable because you keep you know all the money really. Um, so, um, so yeah, kind of, I, I've got a publisher now for my crime books and I self publish as well. And they're both different sorts of journeys. Um, it's a tricky one. It's kind of, it's nice having a publisher in lots of ways and they work really hard and it's really nice working with a team. Um, I would say broadly speaking, but it depends. You sort of tend to make more money from self publishing broadly speaking, and people don't always think that people think if you self publish, you're not really doing it properly. You're not really that good, you know, but um, I'm not saying if I'm that good or not, but I, I, I can see it from the sales part, point of view. Um, I would say the self-publishing side is oh, like, you know, five times more profitable and it's what I make a living off. So Amazing. Yeah. And so for people that are trying to get into writing and are possibly going through that same journey of thinking, mm -hmm. am I any good at this and could I ever make a living? Would mm -hmm. that be your advice for them then to kind of just give it a go or um, yeah, definitely find the publisher route? So my advice would be, first of all, every single writer ever thinks they're not good enough. Every single writer. I still think I'm not good enough. And I, you know, and I, I don't look back and think, wow, I've sold like nearly a million books. I think, no, so you're only as good as your last book. I don't know how good I, you know. So I think every writer thinks that. So probably if you think you're not good enough, you're probably, you know, you're probably great. You're probably really wonderful and on the right path. And secondly, I would say definitely give self-publishing a go. It's, it was the way I did it, I, because I've been published before, I felt more confident about doing it. But the truth is, mm, it's a bit, the publishing industry is a little bit, you know, in order to get accepted, you, it's very, it's, it's a lot, it's a lottery. It really honestly is a lottery. You can get accepted for the most, you know, I mean, my book that was accepted didn't succeed, you know, whereas my book I self-published did. So it's, it's, you know, so I wouldn't, so I was lucky in that I had that confidence but if you if you can give yourself that confidence somehow, um, I would say self-publish because you learn so much and you learn so much from the readers. You've got no one to hide behind. You can't blame anyone else. You know, it's all down to you. And when you get it wrong, you learn really quick how to how to get it right. You know. Wow. And a uh, question about self-publishing actually: Have you did you edit? Do you have anybody sort of edit your book before you put it up, or did you just you just yeah. So I did. So at first I didn't. So my first book, I was very like I did. I even designed my own cover, which is quite horrifying. When I when yeah. I look back and see, it, I'm like, oh my god. And I, when it started doing well, I got my brother-in-law to do it. And um, so I did. So um, you could. So I do. I, I pay an editor who I found on Upworks, who's wonderful. I've, I've worked with probably three different editors, and now I found a really good one. So sometimes you do have to, you know, play around. 
Um, my sister um, like reads the book to give me story editing feedback. And I've also, there's an actress in the US who is amazing and I really recommend working with actors and actresses for any story feedback because they're so into character. Um, so she really, she, you know, does, she does story, she looks at the story and tells me like, this is highly offensive or that, you know, or this completely doesn't work or whatever. Um, and then, yeah, so I hire someone to edit and it's, none of it's that expensive. And to be quite honest, I think in the early days you don't need to really, you can use, you know, your own, if you're good, writing and you can get your brain to slow down and do the editing part I think you can get away with it early on you know and what about the writing process itself like how do you approach a new book and and what do you have any sort of tips and tricks for getting through any blockers that you might have and getting your brain to slow down like you say yes yeah so the first tip is have a really 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 great idea before you get started <laughs> if at all possible if at all possible have a great idea before you get started I know some people they write and they sort of discover as they're writing your things. And I do get that. And you can go back and kind of change things. But yes, if you can have a sort of idea that you can say to someone, like the Hunger Games, you know, 12 teens fight to the death. You know, who wouldn't want to read that? You know, if you, if you, if you can get a really big idea like that before you get started. Um, and then there's always a phase when you're writing books. I call it the murky middle. I'm pretty sure loads of people call it the same thing. Um, and you basically get to the middle and you're like, I hate this, I don't know what I'm doing, and you just have to push through it, and, and it happens with every single book. It's still, I'm, I think, 20 books in now, it happens with every single book, every time, and you just have to remind yourself, you just, just keep going, it'll be fine. And then by the time you get to the end, maybe a month later, you know, it's probably a month of, diff this is difficult writing, you know? And then when you get to the end of that month, you know, you sort of go, start going back over stuff, and you're like, actually, this is looking good now, and then it, you know, and it gets better, so. Just keep going. Don't don't give, don't you know chuck a book aside because you're struggling with it. Keep going. Okay, incredible. And what about the characters? Because we've had a lot of interesting conversations with other crime authors in particular about which comes first: is it plot or is oh, it character? Yes. We'd love to know where you stand on this. It's a good question. It's a great question. I would say just the idea, the big idea comes first. But and so so with the Ivy lessons, the idea was a teacher and a student having a romantic, you know sexually charged love affair um and and then the sort of characters sort of you know they, it was quite easy when you've got a big idea I think thinking who the character's going to be is, is really fun and quite easy but I also get it's so characters are so important that was the, one of the big mistakes I made with my first book I didn't I mean, it, was, it was all plot and no character so I, I think um you know it's really really important to spend the time getting to know the character but also I find sort of depends on the writer but with me when I start writing I'm almost, this sounds a bit pretentious, but I'm always like sort of getting to know the character. So, so over time, so when I go back and do the second draft of the book, more character comes in and more character comes in. So it's not always there for me at the beginning, but it sort of comes in. And I think some people are the opposite. Maybe they have the character, but not the plot. And so maybe it's a bit, however you, however you want to do it, you feel comfortable. So you would actually have a scenario when you're writing that you kind of, you know where your plot's going. So you almost yeah. get the character to the plot. Well, see, it's a tricky, it's a tricky type book, isn't it? Because I'm sure I mean, you guys must have written bits or, you know, stuff or books. I don't know, but sorry, I should have asked that. Um, but um, it's, I think it's a tricky one. You, it's really intelligent what you just said, because you, you're, you, when you just have a plot, you can't fit a character into it. It doesn't, you, it, it will make something really wooden and inauthentic. So you have to kind of have an, a loose idea of a plot. Yeah. And probably a stronger idea of a character. And the character might change the plot as things yeah. go on and change the thought you know the ideas of how you thought it would go I love that and I love that a few authors have said the same to us that when they get to a certain point in their book for example they think it's going to go one way but then almost the character's basically saying no I, yeah. I wouldn't do that I actually would do something else <laughs> <laughs> yeah exactly yeah and, and sometimes you really think while you're plotting you think yeah yeah this is fine my character would do that and then you get there and you feel like no that and you have to go with the character you just have to because it, otherwise it, it just readers get upset you know rightly so and do you think that's because you then get to know your character so much better as you're writing? Do you think that's... Yeah, I think so. In my case, I definitely do. I think maybe there's some people who are, maybe they're nicer people than me, who just have these lovely characters ready, but I just kind of, I don't know them that well. I, actually, even with the Bad Mother series, um, you know, I think every book's got better because I sort of, the characters I, I really know, by book, you know, two or three, I was like, yeah, that's, yeah, I know exactly where this is going to go with these guys, so. Yeah. And... That's, is that, would you say that that book was a little bit more autobiographical, that like you closer to that character, yeah. because, really because of the experience of motherhood? 
Yeah, for sure. I, I, it was it was definitely pretty autobiographical. It, it's it's a lot like my family, but I just kind of reverse the genders of. of I hope my parents never hear this. I, I always tell them like not to like read my books or anything. Um, so yeah, it's really there's a lot of that stuff in there, but it's there's a lot more drama because Juliet's a single mum, so she's split up with her partner. So that didn't happen to me. I've got I've got a lovely partner, but she has a the kind of partner I probably had in my early twenties, and and it would have gone horrendously wrong, and it does. Um, and this sounds a bit mean, but it's really fun writing that stuff. Kind of, you know, there's so much drama and it's it just seeing what would happen. And it's kind of, because they're funny books, it's kind of okay yeah, to yeah. put her in huge difficulty because it's kind of, you know, there's, she's always looking at the humor side of it as well. So, so you obviously, sorry, Lauren, go ahead. Because you've obviously written so many different genres and had therefore so many different types of character. Like, have you had a favourite character that you've written? And how did that character come about, if so? Oh, that's a lovely question, Lauren. Um, so it would definitely be the Bad Mother series. Now, I know the character that my readers like the most, because they're always telling me, is the mum in the Bad Mother series. And that's actually based on um, my dad. <laughs> but it doesn't, you have to reverse the genders, because, like, the mum is, like... So in the Bad Mother story, the mum is this really kind of, like, slightly aggro, fighty, shouty-type character... Yeah. who sort of like has in some ways has very 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 refined tastes and in some ways absolutely doesn't so it's a real kind of you know mismatch so I really I really like that character but I think my favorite character is um Juliet has a cousin John Boy in the Bad Mother series and he he's an ex-soldier and he lost his leg in Afghanistan so I had to do lots of research into that and it, and, the, and it's great like researching into like the British army is just really interesting there's so many interesting characters um but that's I think that's the character I have the most fun with I just there was just a scene I had to write about he gets um it's during the virus so I've just written the Bad Mother, Bad Mother's virus and he gets he receives a box from the Ministry of Defense with all the kind of ration kits from a friend of his to sort of say like you know things go really bad bro you know here's a great big box of rations and the army rations are just like amazingly awful they, they're all like it's like Haribo sweets hot noodles they're like proper like they give fighting you know fighting men in the field just like, you know, Red Bull, you know, all sorts, just sugary rubbish. Anyway, so that, I think that's my favourite character. Amazing. That's so and does that extend to the genre generally? Do you find that, have you found this later series the most fun to write? Or, you know, which, if you had to write one genre forever, which one would it be? Oh, it'd definitely be comedy, definitely, because it, it does something good, you know? And, it, and, and I just love, the emails I get from readers, you know, just sort of saying, it's just really lovely stuff you know I had a bad day and this makes me feel better I really you know look forward to these or just generally just I laughed you know it's, it's so healthy to laugh it's so good for you so I really feel you know that it's sort of putting something good into the world and with the the um the, but the crime books are really exciting as well they do something as well they, they, they you know they kind of lift you up and make you feel I guess energized in a different way um but I, I spoke the comedy I, I lean more towards that sorry crime <laughs> Oh, crime. crime. <laughs> you could do a comedy crime book. Yeah, I could do a comedy crime book. You know, it's, funny enough, I was thinking about that recently. How could you make it funny? Like, I think my, um, I try and make my thrillers have some funny characters in because I think it's, in, you know, it's, it's enjoyable to have funny characters. But yeah, it'd be great, wouldn't it, to have a real, another, you know, really funny type of, I'm trying to think of what was the, there's a funny crime book that, that I want to say, is it the number one ladies detective agency? If you oh, really, would you call yeah, that crime? Yeah, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. I, I like a kind of slow crime thriller, you know, like all quite nice, not too gruesome. Yeah. Um, yeah. But speaking yeah. of that, what do you, for our crime fans out there, what do you think makes a great crime novel? Like what are the key ingredients in that? So definitely, I know it's a bit of a cliche, but definitely like obviously really exciting characters with loads of drama in their lives. So someone that's already had like lots of things happen, in, in their um, life, oh, I think one of my, one of my kids is about to come in. Um, anyway, sorry. Um, so, um, I was in yet. We're so excited. <laughs> <laughs> Just in case you're wondering what the creaking door was, that's what it is. Um, so, um, yeah, I see characters that have like a real good backstory, you know, something really interesting. And I know that kind of like, you know, recovered alcoholic type character is a bit of a cliche, but I quite like that kind of thing. You know, the, the people that have had like a sort of dark past type thing. Um, so a lot of interest with the main character for sure um, and then just a really exciting plot that just pulls you through and solving little mysteries along the way so it's not all about just the one big mystery but along the way you kind of there's a question posed and then it's kind of answered so you get a little bit of ah okay but then there's something bigger that's got to be answered you know so that that would be 
what I think makes a good crime novel. Amazing. All the, all the great ingredients. <laughs> and have you ever read a book that greatly changed you or greatly influenced you as a writer? Um, greatly changed or influenced me. Um, I, I really love like The Secret Diary of Adrian Mole, and I definitely think that's influenced the Bear Brothers series. Um, I mean, there's, I suppose Game of Thrones out of sort of sheer jealousy. <laughs> and like, oh, he's so clever. He's such a genius. Um, I thought it was pretty amazing. I still haven't finished that book, but I've, I'm, I'm plodding through it. I've watched the series um, and really enjoy, I'm enjoying the plodding. It's not plodding in a bad way. It's just a very long book, isn't it? Yeah. Um, and um, what else? The Girl That Came Before. I don't know if you guys have read that. Yeah. That was a great book. Um, and again, really, I just, it's really wonderful as a writer to read stuff. And you think, because, you know, often I sort of think, oh, I could do that, you know. But it's wonderful to read stuff that you just think, oh, my God, like, how did they do it? It's amazing. It's, you know, really. Um, and I think my favourite book or example of crime books that kind of do everything, Rosemary's Baby is, it's not really crime, but it's, you know, sinister, you know. Mm. Um, Rose, Rosemary's Baby is amazing in terms of that character and, and oh, subtle, gentle suspense. And also kind of a bit of a horrible book, but Science of the Lambs is, is incredible in terms of combining char amazing characters and just this wonderful, you know, ticking clock, you know, situation. So, yeah. Brilliant. And Susie, what can we expect from you next? Because you seem like the kind of writer that we're going to be hearing a lot more from and that you might surprise us in terms of your next genre or projects. Do you have anything um, on the cards? Well, I'm doing... Um, so I remember one of the questions, which, we, which I'll answer because I sort of, um, I, when I looked at your question, I thought I better get some, better make sure I've got some good answers, please. Yeah. One of them was what are you reading? So I'm reading Goosebumps and the reason I'm reading it, you know, the kids' books. I love those one, books. <laughs> yeah, they're, very, they're great. They're great. I've never read one before. They're so compelling. Um, my daughter's finished Harry Potter and she really, really wants another book. And I kind of feel like, I'll write one for you. I'm, I'm an author. So I, so I think I'm going to write, I think I'll write a kids' book, but that's more a sort of hobby. Um, but the next book I'm doing is The Bear Mother's Wedding in that series. And then I'm, I'm thinking about doing a thread called Girls Trip, which is about um, a, basically a group of girls that go away on holiday. But um, there's a, this group of old people there who are kind of watching them with sort of sinister intentions. I haven't firmed up that idea enough, but that's generally, that's, that's kind of sort of where it's going. Do you, one of those things. Or funny thrillers. Do you ever worry that you're like these, it doesn't seem like it, but do you ever worry that the ideas are going to dry up because you seem to just have them like where do they come from yeah. oh i think they they sort of um they come from the universe you know you don't know do you I mean, yeah. they sort of you and i never i can never think of one i can never sit down and just think and go right come up with a great idea i think they're always the worst things it's just it's always just something that just pops in my head and i think if you're you guys seem like creative people to me and i think if you're a creative person you tend to have lots of you want to do lots of creative experiences so new things exciting things and i think when you do that stuff you it gives you ideas even if the idea is for something completely different so when you travel when you go and see a new place when you go and see like a buddhist temple because you're interested in it you might get an idea about something completely different um but it, it just comes you know um and i think it's sort of almost tapping into this sort of universal brain and, and ideas just come from it, but you, you kind of, you just have to wait, wait patiently and they come. And just, I guess the trick is really is knowing which are the good ones. Well, we, so your sister said, which I thought was incredible, she said that if she's having trouble with a plot, let's say, or a character or what to do next, she sort of asks like, the question, how do I solve this or what do I do next? And then she said that she'll uh, wake up maybe even the next day and have an answer. Do you have a similar sort of way? Where yeah, yeah, definitely. The walking away kind of thing. And the, um, yeah, I, I didn't know she did that. That's really clever. I have to make a note of doing that. <laughs> it's a really good idea. It's very formalised the process. Yeah. I just kind of think, oh, I'm stuck, and then just walk off, and then hope that when I come back and look at it again, it, you know, it's better. You seem to have a really healthy approach to it because I, I think one of the things we're fascinated by is how you take that idea and then translate it into even one book, let alone a series of very successful and very different books that you've done. So do you? Do you ever get disheartened with that process? Do you have any advice about kind of taking it from that pure creativity and inspiration into something that's obviously quite methodical and yeah. requires a lot of dedication? Yeah, so, so it's a really good question because basically I suppose it's kind of, yeah, I do definitely get disheartened and I also sort of lose faith in my ideas as well, sort of partway through. I'm sort of like, oh, it's not that good. Or you see someone else has done the same thing and you think, ah, you know, I'm just copying. But actually, you know, everyone does their own ideas in a different way. 
um, I've learned. So you don't need to worry if you're halfway through a book and you see another idea that seems identical. It, it'll always be quite different, actually. Um, I find it it's, can be tough being a writer. And I think keeping your sort of mental health and, men, and self-esteem and all that kind of thing going is really hard. So what I do is whenever I have a self-doubt, which I have often, you know, um, I write down the exact opposite of that doubt. And I have a literally I have a list, list of tasks every day and one of them is called positivity and it's the whole list of all the all the sort of rebuffles should we say of, of all my sort of self-doubts so if i'm sort of thinking so if like if i've been and this is another thing about working with publishers actually this is, it can be a bit it can feel a little bit downbeat sometimes so if i'm feeling like oh you know no one reads books anymore oh i'm not as good as this writer or you know i'm i'm um you know it's so competitive it's so hard to break into the industry there's so many of these books or that kind of thing I just completely reverse it and I say, you know, readers are desperate for these books. Um, you, you know, everyone, everyone wants to, to read what you're writing, you know, and I just read that every single day I read this list, which is getting steadily really long. <laughs> it's really about, I don't know, 40 things I read out now. Um, but I do it every day and I think it's important. To, That's so you know, cool because we've been doing the artist way um, by Julia Cameron. Oh, I love that book. I love yeah, that book. and I, I swear yeah. it kind of overlaps with those ideas a bit where maybe not exactly the same, yeah. but the idea of the affirmations and you know, making it positive. I can't remember it had affirmations, but I'm sure it does, because you said so. Uh, but um, the, um, what I remember about the artist way is the morning pages, which I still yeah. do sometimes. You know, it's always like clearing out the rubbish, you know, and the, the creative dates, which I really like, which is, so when I was saying before about the sort of doing creative things, yeah. it asks you to go once a week, doesn't it? I mean, I don't do that, but it, it, it's a great idea. Yeah, a wonderful, wonderful book. And also what I really love about that book is it kind of says, you know, you'll find it when the time is right to find it. So you really feel like, you know, when other people have found it, you're like, oh, you're in the writers, you know, gang, you know. Yeah, um. <laughs> I think it um, it makes it, it really puts that sort of pursuit of creativity up front and makes you mm -hmm. value it as something, if not more valuable than everything else in your life. Mm -hmm. And actually one of my final questions to you was, as a mother and, and you know, obviously, trying to manage all sorts of other things that, that come with that in your life. Do you ever struggle managing the two and putting your writing first? Or do you, do you have, you got, have you managed to get a good balance now? Oh, well, would it sound bad to say no? Not really. If anything, it's like the wrong way around. Like with the kids have been off school recently. They've just gone back yesterday. Um, and, um, and I was writing The Bad Brothers Virus sort of during lockdown. And I sort of, once it was locked in, I was doing it. You know, I'm, I'm like, yeah, I'm, writing, I'm writing this book now. Uh, I did get up really early to do it, sort of four or five in the morning early. Um, but I wrote all day as well, um, seven days a week, you know, and um, I just sort of tried to fit it in around the kids and my partner took up like loads of the slack. But um, if anything, I'm too neglectful, I think. I mean, not actually neglectful, but I think, you know, if anything is probably a bit the wrong way around, I probably should be a bit calmer with it because I think I feel quite anxious. I'm not, if I'm not doing and working, I feel quite anxious. So it's you know it kind of manages that for me I think. And are you always working on a book then so or do you have periods of time because you say that was so condensed you know five seven days a week and mm -hmm. then do you ever have a period when you're not working on anything and you're like mulling over ideas or are you quite consistent? Well at the moment I'm sort of catching up on all the admin I should have done while I was writing the book last month but pretty much I'm always working on something and if I leave it too long without having an idea to work on, even if I'm not like full on power working on it, I feel quite, you know, drifting around like a paper baggy type thing, you know, it's sort of, it, it doesn't feel, so at the moment I'm thinking, I want to write a kid's book and I haven't got an idea for it and I feel a bit lost, I'm kind of like, come on, come on idea, come on, you know, I really want to get started on it. So pretty much, yeah, I'm pretty much always right, working on something or researching it or reading bestsellers, you know, to kind of get an idea, you know. That's amazing. Oh, yeah. That's very inspiring, I think, for anyone who's watching, just to give them a bit more encouragement, just to keep going, keep writing. It's, it's amazing. Yeah, oh, it really thank is. You. Thank you. And so where can fans find your many books, whether they're a comedy fan or a thriller fan? Many books. So at the moment, only on Amazon, because it's because there's no bookshops open. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I know. But um, my thrillers are available in bookshops because um, they're published. Um, my self-published books, which is the Bad Mother series, are available on Amazon. Um, thank you for asking this. I can. I, hey guys. Yeah. <laughs> um, so um, yeah, they're on they're on Amazon print or ebooks. Um, yeah. So, and, and I think people will enjoy them right now. It's a time you need a bit of a uplift and laugh at the moment I think. And are you on any social media channels? 
Yes, I'm on Twitter at Susie K. Quinn, and I love talking to people on Twitter. Um, and I'm on a Facebook, hash, no, not, not hashtag, back, backslash, what's the one, you know, you know what I mean. Yeah, so facebook.com backslash Susie K. Quinn, and I don't have a page, I have a profile, and people can friend me because I just, I just, you know, I'm a friendly sort. I, I like making friends on Facebook. So oh, well, I've